insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 51, Injuries and Illnesses. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my beautiful and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Okay. So, episode 51 technically kicks off our season two of podcasting, Mm -hmm. uh, or our year two of podcasting so it's kind of kind of an exciting time um we are recording a little off schedule this week um and the topic is the reason for that as a matter of fact right Mm -hmm. Uh, we normally record friday evenings and uh both you and i were a little under the weather on friday yep uh different reasons Uh, we can talk about those as we get into the podcast So today we're talking about injuries and illnesses. Uh, We're going to talk about what we mean by an injury and an illness. Then we will talk about what the common injuries that teens tend to face are, what the common illnesses are, and then we'll take a little bit more of a deep dive into the injuries you've endured and the illnesses that you've suffered and how you've dealt with them. All righty. Are we ready to go? Sure thing. All righty. So what is an injury? And this is the definition that you looked up. So we consider an injury any damage to a person's physical condition, including pain or illness, although we're going to define illness separately. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to say, what is an illness? An illness is a disease or a period of sickness affecting the body or mind. And it's kind of um, kind of interesting that you mentioned mind in there too, because a lot of the podcasts that we've done have dealt with some of these common mental illnesses. And, and when I say a mental illness, I'm not saying something where someone is being institutionalized, but stress is a mental illness. Anxiety is a mental illness. And a lot of these are things that we've talked about on the podcast already, because um, teens face these a lot. Uh, questions on what our definitions are? Nope, I looked them up anyway, so I probably have a pretty good um, idea of what we're talking about. All right, so let's start by talking about what common injuries teens have. So, in just a quick look on a site called Share.com, they list really three general categories that teens face injuries in. One is concussions or serious head trauma. Do you know what a concussion is? Yeah, it's basically whenever someone um, bangs the head really hard and it causes um, damage to their brain and they um, need time to recover for it. And Right. So the interesting thing about concussions is that your, your brain kind of floats in your head. Yeah. In, in a fluid. And there's space between the brain itself and the inside of your skull. And what happens is, is that fluid's there to cushion it. So in the event that you have a sudden impact, a football injury, for instance, someone hits you head on with their helmet, or a car accident where they're, you're traveling at a high rate of speed, there's a sudden stop, inertia takes over. You know, you felt inertia in a seatbelt where if you're driving in a car and someone slams on the brakes, you feel your body push against that seatbelt. That's inertia. Your body wants to keep moving in the same direction. 
Yeah, I learned that in sixth grade science. Yeah, and in the event of a concussion, your brain wants to do the same thing. And what happens is the brain continues to move even though the head, does, the cranium does not. And a concussion is basically when your brain smacks into the inside of your cranium. And that can cause swelling of the brain. It can cause bleeding. It can cause all kinds of things. And the problem that you run into there is the brain doesn't have nerve endings. So you can't feel pain in most cases. So what happens is, is you could have a brain injury. You can feel totally fine, but you could have bleeding on the brain or it can cause additional fluid to build up pressure on the brain. So the big concern people have with concussions is you don't know what kind of damage you have until a period after a concussion. Mm. So that's one of the concerns. And you see a lot of that in the NFL today with being a high impact sport. Um, the next one they talk about is broken bones. Now, have you ever broken a bone? Nope, I haven't. I'm lucky enough to not have broken a bone yet. I Yes, you, you are lucky. I've broken several. Um, when I was a kid, I, ironic, ironically enough, I never broke anything as an adult. Uh, but I broke my shoulder, my collarbone, I broke my wrist, I broke my ankle. And I know you broke your nose. And I broke my... Well, the nose isn't bone to break but yeah but you yeah. still kind of broke your nose yeah and it's hard for you to breathe and like one of your nostrils i thank my brother for that still <laughs> and the last thing they talk about that's common is cuts uh that need stitches now have you ever needed stitches not that i know of no um twice i've needed stitches once was because of my cat Ironically enough. Oh, yeah, that whole incident. Yeah, that whole my cat nicked me and I almost bled to death. Yeah, uh, I don't want to relive yeah. that. So there was a time I did get a cut and I needed stitches and I didn't, and it took forever for it to heal. Ah. Um, so that was that's really the three categories, and, and you figure most of these are related to physical activity that, that teens tend to uh, go through, so... Um, it kind of makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So let's come back after a quick break and we'll talk about common illnesses. So the one most obvious one, and I think everyone goes through this regardless of what age you are, <clears throat> and that's the common cold. And that's something, that's why, one of the reasons why we are off schedule this week, because you had a cold this week. Mm -hmm. And Friday, you didn't feel so good, right? Yep. So why don't you tell us, being a recent expert on colds, what the symptoms are and how you treat it? Well, <clears> one <throat> of the main symptoms was obviously the clogged nose. And having to constantly blow your nose eventually ends up having your nose sort of swell up and it hurts to blow your nose. So the way to fix that... Um, I use Vaseline, and that normally helps. I also have to take medicine for cold and flu. So, also, I ended up coughing a few times. I also ended up coughing, and people would, some people would take cough drops. Honestly, I don't, because one, they taste horrible, and I never want to taste them again. And two, I just take normal medicine. Um, and, um... Uh, so you just take over-the-counter medicine for your cold symptoms? Pretty much. I don't have any medications, basically, where... Now, are you like taking pills or are you taking the liquid? Well, the first time, we didn't know if there were any pills, so we had to take the liquid. Unfortunately, I had... I don't like having the liquid. I prefer the pills. But eventually, when Mommy had found some pills, I did eventually... I did take them. I only had to have the liquid once this time. And I did not like it at all. I'll bet, yeah. So how long will you say you're feeling the symptoms of the cold? How many days? Well, I think it started on Wednesday um, when I, when that morning I just wasn't feeling too well. Um, I think the worst of it was on Thursday when I, like, Mommy had suggested me to stay home from school, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to miss out on what I important information I needed from school. Unfortunately, I'm at that age now. I mean, most kids would have probably said, yeah, let me get off of school. Unfortunately, I'm not. I didn't do that. Right. And I probably should have stayed home that day. That's like the one day that I should have probably stayed home. Um, 
I definitely wasn't feeling well. Um, I just had lost. I didn't have a lot of energy. That th the cold can do that to you. Yeah. I frankly just felt so tired. Like when I was doing my homework, um, during half of it, I was just like so tired. I didn't want to do it. So how do you feel today? Uh, I definitely feel much better. Friday was one of the more recovery days. I was better than it was better than Thursday, but it was still kind of bad. Um, um, I've had it for about about five days now. Um, I'm getting much better. I haven't been. I'm really sniffling. It's just um, my throat's been my throat was actually dry this morning. Um, that's been the worst of it today. Um, I'm not that sniffly anymore. Um, um, I'm healthy enough to do the podcast at least. So that's good. So how many colds a year do you typically get? Um, normally. One, two, or three. I really don't. It's around that. Um, well, that's one. pretty good because in looking up the statistics on this on a website we've used before, verywellhealth.com, adults on average get colds two to five times per year. Children get them seven to ten times. So I think you're doing pretty good. Yeah, honestly, um, I've only had. When I was in elementary, I only stayed home for like one day, maybe two if it was bad, if it was worse. I don't think I've ever really, I don't remember any time I've ever really gotten the flu, though. No, because you usually do get your flu shot, so mommy makes sure of that. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I get all those. Right. Even and though, you know, I don't like the attention that, bring, that brings. I totally understand. The interesting thing about the cold versus the flu, they don't have... A cold vaccine because the cold can be caused by over 200 different viruses okay. so it's easy to get them and it's easy to get them over and over again yeah whereas the flu typically a flu vaccine covers you for four or five different strands of flu that are out there yeah which brings us to our next common illness influenza or the flu now we know you get your flu shot you don't get the flu you've never gotten the flu um, and I think one of the problems with the flu is it oftentimes can manifest itself as a cold. And a lot of people just think of the flu is a bad cold when it's actually a lot worse than that. Um, especially for people who are elderly or who are already infirmed with certain health risks like diabetes or asthma or something like that. Uh, because a lot of times the flu winds up going after your lungs and you can get pneumonia, which can get very dangerous very fast. Um, that's why it's smart to get a flu shot every year. Yeah. Um, honestly, um, I'm still a bit confused with the difference between a cold and a fever. Could you please like help me figure that out? I had never really understood. I mean, I know a cold is just when you get sniffly and cough, but like sometimes it escalates to having a fever. Yes, yeah, so a, a fever itself is a sign of an infection, okay? So if, when your body is fighting off some kind of bacterial or, um, uh, I forget the other type of infection. When your body is fighting off an infection, um, your body temperature goes up. It means you have an infection and your body's working extra hard. Um, and sometimes when you have a cold, you could get a bad cold and that cold can settling your throat and you can get, um, an infection in your throat. It can settle in your lungs. You can get an infection there. You can get an infection in your sinuses if it's not treated properly. So anything can, re you know, result in you getting an infection, getting a cut could get an infection if you don't clean it out. Yeah. So kind of look at a cold the same way you would a cut. Okay, if you don't treat it, chances are it's going to get infected. When it gets infected, your body's working overtime to try and fight that off, and it results in a fever. Mm. That's all the fever is. So what happens at that point in time is you take medicines that are fever reducers, and they basically help to boost your body so it can fight that infection. So that's why you don't always get a fever when you have a cold, because if you get a cold and you start taking your medicine like you did, 
that medicine helps to prevent the infections from setting in. Um, okay, have I ever gotten a fever before? You've had a fever a number of times, yeah. Mm. It's not uncommon to get a fever, and that's just, that's your body's natural way of fighting off infections. Oh, okay. So when it gets very high, like if you get a fever up to 104 or so, then it gets a little scary because once you get to 106, 107, it can start causing other problems in your body. Uh. You know, it can cause brain damage. It can cause, you know, organ failure and stuff like that. Um, and that also means that the infection might be running out of control and could be poisoning your blood at that point in time too. Oh, okay. So that's why, you know, if you ever get a fever of 103, 102, mommy and I start worrying, that's when the call goes to the doctor. Ah. And the doctor decides if you need to come in or not. You get to 104, that's when we're starting to put damp cloths on your forehead. We're trying to cool the body off to give it a a better chance of fighting because it's starting to overheat itself. Mm. Um, so there's different things that we do, but definitely when a fever starts to get up there is when you want to call the doctor. Okay. So uh, influenza, flu is another one. Strep throat is another one. So strep throat is a bacterial infection that you can get that could be the result, you know, could start out as a cold and then that infection gets to your throat and then the there's a basically a bacterial culture that grows in your throat that your body starts to fight off. That's that infection we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Have I ever gotten strep throat before? I don't know if you've ever had it. Um, your brother used to get strep throat a lot. Uh, and as a result of, of numerous cases of strep throat, he wound up having his tonsils taken out mm. because the tonsils tend to breed the bacteria. Um, and he had oversized uh, tonsils that were causing problems. So, but I do want to ask: um, if do we ever need tonsils, like in our body? Um, I don't know what the actual purpose of tonsils are. Um, I know they secrete some kind of chemical that the body uses. That. I don't know if the body can function the same without it. Mm. Um, unfortunately, that's I'm not a not a doctor, so that's something we'd have to look up. Maybe mm. we could do a podcast on that one some other time. Mm. Uh, the next one they talk about is mononucleosis. Have you ever heard of that one? Nope. Have you ever heard of mono? No. That's what it's commonly referred to as. This is what people describe as the kissing disease. So a lot of teens get this. It's earned its nickname because it's most common among teenagers and has spread through saliva. Mono, mono is caused by the, I can't even pronounce this, cytomegalovirus. I guess I can pronounce it. Um, and it can also be caused by Epstein-Barr virus, EBV. Symptoms of mono include severe fatigue, fever, sore throat, swollen nymph, lymph nodes in the neck, sore muscles. Uh, since these symptoms can be caused by many different illnesses, you'll have to see your healthcare provider for an exam and blood test to determine if you actually have mono. So generally what happens is this happens th through teens who are kissing and it's not just kissing, but, you know, that's a common cause for it. So if you hear somebody has mono, that's what it is. Uh. Uh, how about, here's another big word, gastroenteritis. Have you ever had that? Well, I don't know if I've had it, and I don't know what it is. It's also the stomach flu. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yes, yes I've had it. you have had it. And, in fact, that is why I was under the weather uh, Friday as well for the podcast. I had stomach flu on Friday, it seems. Uh, and the last one that is a common illness that we'll mention but not go into great detail are sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, sexually transmitted diseases, sometimes called sexually transmitted infections, are increasingly common among teens. Gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, HPV, HIV and hepatitis are just some of the diseases that can affect teenagers. Um, we'll probably have a podcast on that sometime in the future. 
Uh, that's one of those sensitive subjects that I think requires a lot more attention. Uh, but we'll treat it respectfully and we'll treat it clinically. It won't be anything that's, you know, the way that we typically do our podcast. It's not going to be something that's going to be embarrassing. And it's something that, that needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. So we will talk about it some other time and we'll probably bring mommy in so it's not uncomfortable. Right. Mommy has a way of making those topics seem you know, much more palatable when we discuss them. Mm -hmm. So those are the common illnesses. So I want to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about some of your specific injuries and illnesses and how you've dealt with them. So before the show, you compiled a list of injuries and illnesses uh, that you've had to go through. And I'm just going to go through this list. I've rearranged the order that they were in, so I hope they weren't in, in any specific order. Nope. So the first one we have is one we've talked about many times on the podcast, and that is the infamous kickball injury. Oh, great. So why don't you tell us about your kickball injury? Alrighty, so we've talked about it multiple times before. I don't think I've actually gone into detail about it. Basically... I think it was either third or fourth grade. We were playing kickball in gym, and um, um, it was my turn to go up. After two strikes and then eventually kicking the ball, I started running the first base. But then the one kid on the other team who was on the field had decided instead of running up and tagging me or throwing the ball at me to get me out, he instead rolled it, which eventually... Uh, Leaded to the coincidence of me tripping over it, and then I eventually slid across the field. On your face. Yep, yeah, and for some reason, I thought I was going to break my teeth. Like, that was just the th immediate thought. Once I tripped, I'm like, oh god, I gotta protect my teeth, and I literally just closed my mouth immediately. Well, that's, both my eyes. That's good, you eat less dirt, <laughs> dirt that way. Unfortunately, I still ended up getting dirt in my mouth. So, what was the end result injury-wise of that incident? Well, when the t by the time I had opened my eyes, I could just, like, all I, it was just a blur. I could feel sand and tears both in my eyes, even though I didn't feel like crying. Unfortunately, sometimes pain does that to you. Yes, it I does. Ended, I ended up getting a bruise on, I ended up getting a bruise on both my elbows and my knees. Okay, so no stitches, right? Nope, just like skin, knees, scratches. skinned elbows, typical stuff there. Yep. I think it did more uh, injury mentally than than it did physically to you because of the impact that it's had over all these years. Yep, it still scars me. Uh, let's see. So aside from that, you've had various scratches. Uh, you just had a Band-Aid on the other day for that. What do you typically do if you get a scratch that doesn't require stitches? Well, um, in any case, it, um, the best thing for me to do would be to wipe off any blood that was caused and then just put a quick Band-Aid on. And but if it does need a bit of rubbing alcohol, Mommy would always help me with that. But there was. Well, we generally don't put rubbing alcohol. Well, in. Yeah, Usually we'll put peroxide yeah. or uh, uh, an antibiotic on there or something. Now, rubbing yeah. alcohol literally would just make it burn. Yeah, I just didn't We're know not what it was mean. called. I didn't know what it was called. <laughs> and there was one infamous. There was one incident where I can probably always remember, and it actually did sort of scar me. Which one was that? It was in third grade when I stabbed myself with pencil. So. Okay, so tell us about that one. So it was a normal day. I was basically sharpening my pencil. For some reason, all of us were in a line just to get, just to sharpen our pencils. And for some reason, a kid bumped. I don't know which kid, but they had bumped me, and I had stabbed my freshly sharpened pencil into my skin. Apparently, it pierced through big enough to thick. It was able to pierce um, deep enough to where I started to bleed a bit. So I had to wash it off and. The lead is still stuck in here, and I've had this, and I've basically had the scar ever since then. Okay, so just for the record, it's not lead; it's graphite. Graphite, sorry. Lead could lead to lead poisoning. I know. I'm still trying to get used to saying that. Okay. I, I, well, and I don't understand why, because they haven't used lead in pencils in like 50 years. I know. Um, and I will tell you, and I've told you in the past, I had a similar incident where I went to. 
uh, get a pencil from from a friend of mine, and I went to go pick it up, and I wasn't looking, and he lifted it up, point up, which I'm still not sure why he did that. And when I went to grab it, I wound up getting it in the palm, and I picked my hand up, and it was literally hanging out of my hand. It was in so deep. Oh. Uh, and I still have the lead in the palm of my hand to uh, to illustrate that as well. Graphite. Graphite, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm well, old, both. so it may have been lead back then. Oh, uh, we're still... We're, see, we're both getting used to it. Yeah, well, I'm old enough that it might have been lead. <laughs> um, so the next thing that I have on here is another uh, mentally scarring incident, and that is the infamous falling off the scooter incident. Oh, great, that one. So tell us about that one. Okay, so I know I was much younger than before the kid. This was way before the kickball incident. Um, we used to go this. This one. was before you learned how to sled on your face, right? Mm. <laughs> when have I ever sled on my face? I've never actually gone sledding before. During the kickball incident. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay, so I think I was about six or seven. Do you know what age I was? No, it was, I don't remember that far back. Five, six, or seven, either or. Take your pick, right? <laughs> yeah. Multiple choice. So we used to always go to this one park where there was like a little dinosaur park for younger kids where we have a bunch of our um, earliest memories. Your um, earliest memories? My earliest memories. Um, and they also have a little trail, and I'd gotten a scooter, and um, we had gone... And let me just say, I was only wearing a helmet. This will come in later. Yes, because we were terrible parents. We didn't have the whole armor-plated gear on you. Yeah, so um, we had almost finished, and there was the one hill, and we had, and I had the perfect idea to just go up to the top, push myself a little bit, and ride all the way down the hill. Yeah, and that worked a, out well. Yeah, that was a pretty big hill. I mean... I'd done it like three times before the actual incident, so I'd gone up to the hill like I did a couple other times, and like, so I went down, and I don't know what happened, but halfway down the hill, I, um, I think um, something went wrong with um, the scooter wheels, and it made me fall back. Right. Let's blame the scooter. And I think Bobby was actually filming. You don't know what happened. I know what happened. You fell. <laughs> <laughs> you checked gravity, and gravity was still working. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and that was actually a similar injury eh, a similar injury to the kickball incident. Right. Scraped knees and scraped elbows. And that tends to hurt. Yep. So the next couple that you have listed here... Uh, are regarding your dental work. All oh, right. Great. So that story. So you had a few teeth pulled. Yeah. Um, that, and the thing is, I actually had um, I actually had a point where I actually had broken a tooth. I don't know if anyone else has like, gone through that, and there were just teeth shards in my mouth. Teeth shards. I don't want to go too graphic. Just saying. Okay. Okay. So you had to have teeth pulled. Why did you have to have teeth pulled? Well, the main reason for the first time was because um, my it was just a normal dentist appointment then um, until they found the broken tooth and the other loose tooth. So they had to pull them out, which was not fun. Um, and the second time was so that I could get my braces on. Right. So you had two separate incidents. And what do you, what, you know... You get a tooth pulled, how do you treat that? Um, so, well, during the whole thing, they had put me under some laughing gas and I'd numb my mouth. And um, when they were all done, they had to put gauze in my mouth to stop the bleeding, to help stop the bleeding, basically. And my whole mouth would be numb for, like, most of the day. So, um, the way I had to treat that was every couple of hours, Mommy would have to switch out the gauze, so... And let me just say, it was really hard to drink with a straw, or even drink from a spoon, or drink anything. Well, it's hard to drink when you can't feel your mouth. Like, literally, <laughs> the bottom of my mouth was numb. Like, I, like in the car for the first time, like when my mouth was numb, I literally put my head against the seatbelt, and I couldn't feel anything. Yeah, you wind up drooling a lot that way, too. Yep, and like when... And let me just say, the weirdest thing was whenever I put my fingers on my face, it felt so weird. Like, you're used to, like, 
you used to have, like, so your nerves still work in your hands, but your nerves were numbed on your face. And when you so feel, you your feel it in your hand, but your face doesn't feel you touching it. Yeah, and it was yeah. the weirdest thing ever. I don't like that. So the next incident we have has to do with teeth as well, and that was the first few months of braces. Now, we did a whole podcast on braces. <laughs> yeah, pr so probably no one has uh, seen that because that was the very first episode. Well, and we're going to retouch that and, and do an update cool. on what you've got. But um, tell us what some of the restrictions were and what some of the discomfort was with the braces. All righty, so the first thing with the discomfort, um, it was mainly because, well... Obviously, having braces for the first few months hurts. Um, I actually used to have rubber bands, and I only had braces on the top teeth, but not the bottom. I had a lip bumper there. So when I had to wear the rubber bands, like, the first month or so, I, well, for a few months, I actually had to wear them all the time. And let me just say, that was completely painful. It was harder to open my mouth. I was not used to it. And, like, the first day, I literally just ended up crying. Yeah, and whenever... And, like, for the first few times, I actually had to get my lip bumper readjusted because the rubber bands were working too hard. Eventually, they had to take it out for a bit because um, it, it had actually gotten stuck on my lip and it started to hurt. Um, and then eventually for like an entire month, it was like gone and I actually felt better until it had to come back. And then I only had to wear the rubber bands at night, which was way more tolerable. So you're about two years in the braces now, right? Uh, yep. And how, how are, how are they now? What's the biggest complaint you have now? Uh, I really don't have too many complaints. Occasionally after I get them tightened, I might like feel like a bit of, like the wire, if I ever get them tightened, it's just a little, like, it gets caught on my lip more times. That's, like, the biggest complaint. So just a little discomfort then. Yeah. Also, I actually had trouble speaking back then um, because having a bunch of metal in your mouth makes it harder to speak because you're not used to it. So I had to basically practice speaking again. Yep. Yeah, you, that's a lot of metal to have to talk around. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing we have is one that was a possible concussion uh, worry here, and that was getting hit in the head with the soccer ball. The uh, getting in the hit in the head with a soccer ball, basketball, or any other ball. Yeah, I've had that happen multiple times. So when that happens, I'm curious how does how do they treat them? I'm assuming this is happening in, happening at school, right? Yeah, I mean. Um, the most recent one I had was when an 8th grader, when we were playing, like, a soccer game, had kicked the ball and it landed right in, in its, and it, they kicked it at my head. I don't think they kicked it at well, your Well, they head. didn't kick me, they didn't purposely do it, it just, like, hit me. It hit you in the head. Now, what did they do? Did they pull you out of the game? Did they have you go to the, uh... A nurse? They had me go to the nurse, which was, like, the first time I ever went to the nurse, um... They, um, she basically just um, let me sit down for a bit and have a nice peck on my head. Yeah, and really what she was doing there probably is what a lot of sports franchises now call uh, concussion conditions, where you could be concussed, even a mild one, and they want to pull you out so you're not running around anymore, and they want to keep you under observation. And they're going to give you an ice pack for the pain, but they want to make sure that you don't exhibit any symptoms. Mm -hmm. Slurred speech, uh, blurred vision, anything like that that would suggest that you had a concussion. Mm -hmm. uh, because if it did, then they'd have to start doing, you know, they'd have to take other procedures into account. Uh, if you did exhibit uh, conditions of a concussion, they might go so far as to give you an MRI to see if there's swelling on the brain and stuff like that. So them doing that and pulling you out and giving you a chance to slow down, relax, and observe you is basically just an abundance of caution to make sure you didn't have a concussion. Mm. Uh, you had a bruised toe. Talk about that one. So basically this happened when I was when I fell running upstairs. Um, yeah. Talk more about that one. Okay, sorry. okay, okay. So basically, I had to get your phone um, from downstairs, so I grabbed it, and... Oh, so it's all my fault. No, it wasn't your fault. It was my fault, okay? okay. I was running up the stairs a bit too quick, and at the very top step, I had actually tripped. And what did you do? 
Okay, so I tripped and I fell down. Your phone wasn't broken, but my toe apparently really hurt. Well, good, because my phone's worth much more than your toe. <laughs> <laughs> How did you treat it, sweetheart? Um, I guess for most of it, for most of it, I basically just had an ice pack on my toe just so it stopped any like possible swelling. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So the last injury that we have here is really not. <clears throat> an injury it's more of an after effect and that is what the issues of getting a shot so all the shots that you remember now <clears throat> you get in your arm right mm -hmm. and what are some of the issues with getting a shot in the arm well the thing is they put the shot in your muscle and when there's pain in your muscle it's harder to move it around because it hurts right basically um you it's harder to do more simple tasks like put on a shirt because you have to bend your arm in different ways and in certain ways when you bend it your muscle will start to hurt so it's like a bruise like getting punched in the arm or something like that that's kind of the feeling you deal with yeah and how long does that usually last less two or three days um it's not it doesn't take too long to heal but it still is a uh, inconvenience and a pain in the butt well, pain in the arm, actually. Pain in the arm, yeah. whatever. I mean, unless you're getting shots in the butt, but, <laughs> which, as you get older, you will. Unfortunately, I have gotten that once. Yeah, that is that is always an option. Yeah, I don't want that. Um, so that was it. That was all we had on the list for injuries. We'll come back and we'll talk about illnesses that you've suffered. All right. So the first one that we have here is one that I think required a little bit more research and a little bit more time. I could never remember the name of this. I used to call it the Hamacher Schlemmer disease, but <laughs> the actual name is the Hanak Schonlein Purpura or HSP. Now you had this a few years back and why don't you tell us how it manifested on you? Okay, so I guess the whole story behind it was when I was at summer camp. Um, this was like I went to my old tutor time where I spent um, preschool, pre-K, and kindergarten. Well, I didn't spend kindergarten there, but they had kindergarten there. Um, and I was spending summer camp there, and during the week you guys didn't have... I didn't have to go for five days, but you said in the beginning of August I had to, so I was a bit bitter about that. You were mean, I know. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I think two days after you announced this to me, um, we had gone swimming for the one trip, and I had... F the first sign of it was when I started to feel a bit of pain in my legs. It was, like, mild pain. I didn't really think anything of it. I thought if I just went into the pool, it would feel better. So I went in the pool. Um, the first few seconds were better, but then I started hurting again. Um, I don't remember what I did in the pool, but then we I remember sitting on the bench and getting ready, and my legs were still hurting. And I don't remember anything about the bus trip, but then like I was literally in the doorway, and I literally had was on the ground and my legs were just completely painful i couldn't i wasn't able to put on my shoes like it was just completely painful and they ended up having to call you to pick me up so now explain the pain was it muscle pain was it joint pain what was it thing is it was pain al among the whole leg it's okay. like trying to stand up or even put shoes on or like i couldn't even put socks on like the time you would come back like i couldn't even put the flip-flops on like i literally couldn't do anything with my legs i couldn't stand up it was really hard i couldn't put shoes on it hurt so bad that i couldn't do any of that so what were some of the other symptoms eventually i actually ended up having red spots all over my legs from my um waist down basically and so this kind of scared mommy and daddy. Yep. Um, we didn't know what was going on. Yeah. We wound up taking you to the doctor, and the doctor instantly recognized what it was. And the thing that I think frustrated me more than anything was almost nothing is known about this disease other than the fact that it exists and what the symptoms are. Uh, there's no known cause for it. Uh, there's no vaccine for it there's no treatment for it um and basically what happens is is you get essentially 
symptoms of arthritis in your lower joints and you get these red spots, the what are called purpura. Uh, they look like bruises, basically, and it's broken blood vessels. Um, from what we understand of the disease right now, it seems to be somehow tied to your immune system, uh, somehow going out of whack to some degree, but almost nothing is known about this disease. Um, it lasts for about four to six weeks. Uh, you treat the bruises or the joint pain with uh, ice packs, you know, hot and cold, just like you would any type of arthritis symptom. Um, but you should, if if your child suffers from this, they need to be under a doctor's supervision because the body, as a result of this, the body can secrete a um, protein that is damaging to the kidneys. And you had to go through numerous blood tests during the course of this to make sure that your body was not secreting this protein. Because uh, if you were, they were going to have to do other types of treatments to defend against kidney disease and some of the other more dangerous things. Fortunately, uh, your symptoms were limited to the pain. And it was painful because it was to the point you couldn't even walk. I was I had to pick you up and carry you around. Um so it was the pain in the legs, and it was the red spots, the bruising that you had. But I do remember one specific instance, like about two days after I found out about this. Um, um, I had just finished up in the bathroom, and sadly, I had found a spider. And at that point, unfortunately, at that age, I was like completely terrified. You still I, are. I know. I literally <laughs> jumped out of my mom's arms. I literally ran out, even though my legs hurt so bad. That's funny. Uh, I will never forget that. That's one of the uh, more traumatic things that happened then. So for the parents out there, um, I did find a WebMD article on this that gives you a little bit more detail. I will include it in the show notes, uh, which you can get from our website when we post the uh, episode up there at insightsintothings.com. So after your Hamecker Slemmer debacle, uh, the next thing we have on the list here is the cold, which we've already talked about. Uh, but how do you treat the cold typically? Typically, I would um, most of the times I would stay home. But you know, this time I'm like, this time nope, you I'm fine. It out. I'm fine. I'm going to school. Like, yeah, most of the time when I would stay home, I would just stay in my bed. I wouldn't do too much because I'm feeling way too tired to do anything, and that's basically how I felt it this time but i just didn't want i didn't want to miss anything at school so i decided that i really was just gonna tough it out um okay and basically like i said before whenever my nose would get like sort of i don't know what you call it it, it gets dry and, and cracked and rough and red yeah so i think we all know what the symptoms of that are yep blowing your nose too much <laughs> yeah so um we would always treat it with vaseline and my lit I, and I actually and occasionally since you know since you can't breathe through your nose you breathe a lot more through your mouth which causes your lips to dry up yep. um but you can just use chapstick for that i definitely know it worked a lot for me okay so the next one we have is a stomach virus, which I just got over. Um, you've had it in the past. How do you usually get over it? Well, normally I would have to just stay <coughs> home. Um, I remember one really bad time where I would just like, I couldn't go to sleep because I kept throwing up. Yeah. Like, I literally like, when I was in my bed one, when I was in my bed one night, I had woken up and I just felt weird. I just felt like some wet stuff around my mouth, and I had thrown up, so my so mommy had to clean that up, and at one point I was in your room, and I accidentally threw up then, so I basically couldn't sleep. Yeah. Like, mommy is a trooper, though, when we're sick, man. She is... <laughs> whew, I don't know what we would do without mommy yeah. when we're sick. Like, literally, <laughs> I remember... And I think that goes for most moms out there, too. Yeah. So for that time, I basically just <clears throat> stayed home, um, and I would just keep a trash can near me whenever I felt like I needed to throw up. Thankfully, Mommy was able to work from home then. So, and so what would you normally eat under those conditions? 
crackers and soup. I remember having crackers, crackers and soup and a soup, lot. Yeah, I really, and easy. Yeah, I don't eat a lot then. Yeah. Frankly, I don't even feel like I would eat a lot anymore. Like, I literally would just eat crackers all day. So you also have occasionally a stomach ache that you deal with. Mm -hmm. um, how do you usually deal with your stomach aches? Normally, I would either try to go to the bathroom, which doesn't always work. Um, I would also... Definitely when I was younger, I would take a nap, but now I would just lay in bed and just lay there occasionally. Well, this doesn't always work, just saying. Um, I would take some medicine, but it doesn't always work. It's probably not the best thing for you, so I don't recommend it. Okay. Um, but yeah, most of the time... Well, I would sometimes it's, it's from not going, having not gone to the bathroom, yeah. and you get bound up. And, yep. and sometimes you take a laxative or something like that, some high fiber, you know, supplement to try and, and flush the body out. Yep. Because uh, otherwise it, it builds up and it starts to put pressure on the insides and it tends to hurt. Yep. So, so a lot of times it's just getting that out. Yep. Headaches. You get headaches occasionally. Do you get headaches a lot? Um, I, at least once a month. Um, I don't well, really... Well, that could be from something else, too, which we'll talk about in a minute. Oh, great. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten a, a migraine, which is just like a worse headache, which sort is, of. Yeah, migraines are, are can be very debilitating. Both mommy and I suffer from them occasionally. Yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten a migraine, and I'm actually thankful because I've heard how terrible they are, and yeah. I'm thankful I just have, like, minor headaches. Yeah, hopefully you won't have to deal with those. I hope so. And then the last thing that we have, we did two podcasts. We dedicated our first two-part oh, podcast yeah, to. Oh, yeah, this. And this is what you affectionately refer to as your monthly. Oh, great, this. So uh, there's nothing, you know, and first of all, it's not it's not an illness. Yeah. So let's just say that right off the bat. Um, but it does cause certain discomfort, certain inconvenience. It's a physical uh, manifestation of these types of things. So we thought it was worthwhile to put in here just so that we could recap how you deal with it. So <laughs> explain to us what you go through and, and how you how you cope. Well, the main thing is once I figure it out, I start feeling stomach pain, which is like the case all the time. Um, I... I go to the bathroom way more often and it's mainly just to either sit in there or actually go because for some reason it just um helps calm my stomach um i also my eating habits change as well mm -hmm. um mommy would if it ever got too bad mommy would always recommend pain medicine and occasionally i don't always take it yeah so and you know it's it's one of those things that happens on a regular basis it's it's a nat perfectly natural thing to, to deal with, and it's discomfort. Um, so you can treat it with medicine. You can treat it with certain activities like you've talked about. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, it's not an illness. Um, there's one last one that we don't have on the list here that I did want to talk about briefly. And you and I talked about this beforehand, and that is growing pains. Oh, yeah. Oh, I also have another thing after this. I forgot to put it in there. All right. So why don't you talk about your other thing, and then we'll talk about growing pains. One time I had pink eye. Pink eye. Yep. So let's talk about that. What What is pink eye, and how do you treat it? Okay, so when I had woken up on a Saturday morning, um, my eye felt itchy, so I went over to Mommy, and she immediately saw that my eye was a bit swollen so i looked in the mirror and she um decided to call the doctor and it was confirmed i had pink eye okay um the way i had to treat it was i had to take eye drops which was very uncomfortable i never liked doing those i know yeah. you used to have to take eye drops as well and i do from time to time for my allergies yeah and i think you can understand how uncomfortable it is to just have that in your eye yeah it's not good yeah, I remember, I think it was over the summer, um, and I had to, like, take the eye drops um, at summer camp. I would um, go up to the nurse, and when I was called up, and she would just um, give that to me. So how long did you suffer from pink eye? I think about at least a week. Okay. Um, don't, I don't really know too much about it. I just remember the whole incident. Now, was it painful or just itchy? It was mainly itchy. I don't 
Mainly itchy. I don't remember if it was ever painful. And you got, you know, at night when you woke up, you would get the, the crusty eye type uh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. And we'd have to clean that out with a damp, warm, damp cloth. Oh, yeah, that. And then put the drops in. But, you know, it's a common, it's common for kids, mm -hmm. you know, to get this. So growing pains. So before you go through a growth spurt, and all kids do, teenagers do, what were some of the things that you would notice would happen before you went through a growth spurt? Well, um, the first thing was that my appetite would change. I would get more hungry, and I would want to eat more food. Right. And that's, like, typical when you're growing up. You just need to eat more food because your body needs that energy. Yep. Um, I also came into the pain part. It also came um, affected into pain. My legs would begin to have, like, pain as they were growing, so I'd have to take pain medicine, occasionally put a ice pack on it just to stop it from hurting. Yep, yep, and that's that's pretty normal. I mean, all kids go through it. You'll get joint pain as your bones start to grow and you start to stretch the tendons and stuff like that. Um, you can treat it with pain medicine to try and keep the pain down. You can treat it with anti-inflammatories like a Motrin or something like that. Uh, exercise is a huge part of that, which is, you know, the schools recognize this. That's why you get recess. This is why you get your gym class. You know, the more you exercise going through these growth spurts, the more limber and, and um, stretched your joints and your tendons and your muscles and everything are and the easier it is on your body as you're as you're growing mm -hmm. i think that was all we had Alrighty. um did you have any closing remarks or shout outs yep all right we'll come back for closing remarks and shout outs and we'll go from there go for closing remarks Alrighty, so for all the parents and teenagers out there, if you or someone you know is suffering from an injury or an illness, it's important to recognize how to treat it so it doesn't um, become worse because if you don't treat something right away, um, it can probably come back. It'll probably just get worse and it could cause some major damage to the body and the mind. Um, so always make sure to treat it. Um, parents, please recognize some of the common injuries and illnesses that um, your teenagers can have and try to help them through it. Um, and uh, take care of yourselves. Okay. Any shout outs? Yep. Giving a shout out to you and mommy, mainly mommy, because <laughs> as you said before. Okay. Touche on that one. <laughs> As before, mommy um, basically is really, um, how do you say it? She's the caregiver. Yeah, the caregiver, basically. Like, whenever one of us is sick or injured, she's always there to find the quickest cure and to... Even if she is sick herself, she is still there to be the caregiver uh, every time, which amazes me because when I told you... You know, when I'm sick, I'm a crybaby. I just want to crawl into a corner and be left alone and to suffer. Yep. Um, mommy is nothing like that. You know, if if you're sick and she's sick, she is, she's up suffering and, and, you know, making you your soup or whatever it is that she's making to make you feel better. You know, and she's a, she's a trooper like that. Yeah, the thing is, whenever I'm sick, I try to avoid contact with others so I don't get them sick because I feel as though if whenever they get sick and I was just sick, I feel like it would be my fault and I'd feel guilty. Yeah, that's a very courteous thing to do. So I think that was it. Did you have anything else? Uh, not that I know of. All right. So we're going to run. You didn't put the uh, contacts at the bottom of the show notes. So I'm, uh, I'm running off blind uh, here. I don't. I don't. Uh, dude, so, dude, I don't know. I don't really right. know them. I don't study. So here's the deal. Uh, you can reach us via email at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can visit the website where we'll have the show notes and all the links at insightsintothings.com. You can reach us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com uh, slash insights into things podcast. 
You can get us on YouTube for all of our videos at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can get us, where else can I get? Oh, you can get the audio podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. And don't forget, you can find us on Twitch where we stream live and you can always. And where is that? I don't oh, know. You don't know, see? I just know whatever we stream on. Sheesh. Right. Twitch.tv slash insights into things. We also like to hear you guys' comments, so please leave us comments at... I don't remember what it was. <laughs> you're, clearly, you're not from the marketing department. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> clearly. Comments at insightsintothings.com. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights Net. Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our only monthly podcast done by you and Sam. And that's that's where your marketing skills come in, pushing yeah, the other shows. Yeah, pushing the other shows. All right, that's it for this week. We are out. See you, everyone. <laughs>